Hey, what's up, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a back with a My Two Cent Switch slash gaming video where I take a look at some of the stories that came out this week and I give you my thoughts and opinion. Uh, before we get started though, I do want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving or happy and safe Thanksgiving indeed though. Even though this video will probably be posted on Saturday if I can get it there in time, but still, nevertheless, happy Thanksgiving to you all. So we have three stories to cover for this week, so why don't we get started with the first one. And the first one is one that I am very pleased about though. Now, I did a review of one of my favorite games. Um, I ranked number five as one of my top, as my favorite game of all time. This one should tell you right here. Valkyrie Chronicles, so if I'm saying the name correctly though. So it appears as though an announcement was made that Valkyrie Chronicles 4, I apologize if I'm saying the name wrong or anything like that, if I'm saying it incorrectly, has been announced. And it's coming not only to the PS4 and Xbox One, but it's also coming to the Nintendo Switch. So Switch owners, especially like me, for those who've never played the Valkyrie Chronicles game before, are going to be able to play it for the very first time. This to me is very good news because I've been a fan of the series. I love some of the gameplay mechanics. Um, the art style is really great and the story itself really holds up though. I know some people hated Valkyrie Revolution, did not like that as much though. Um, I didn't hate it as much though in my opinion, but it wasn't exactly at, as nearly as good as the, <clears throat> excuse me, as the original Valkyrie Chronicles though. Um, I did a review on that. So um, I'll have a, if, if I find the video, I'll have a link in the description. You can check out that review as well. Um, and the second and third one, though, um, this, I still enjoyed the second one, but there were some mechanics I did not like about that one. And the third, never tried it out because it never came over here, though, as well. So hearing this announcement that the game's coming over to the West and is in, in development is great. And I'm glad that they are bringing this game over, though. Um, there are two things that caught my attention about this announcement, though. Um, the first one, though, and again, link will be in the description, um, some of the stuff I read about. The first one is, regarding the Xbox One version, though, it seems as though the Europe and the US will be getting it, though, but Japan won't. And at first, I thought that was a little bit odd why they wouldn't develop, bring it for Japanese gamers who have an Xbox One. But then again, I also kind of realized that the Xbox One isn't exactly selling like hotcakes in Japan, to be exactly, compared to the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch, for that matter. So I can understand that. I can understand why they're not making it there, it is making it for the Xbox One. A little disappointed, though, but it's still coming to the Xbox One. The other one that I thought that was kind of weird is that they're not, they, had, they made no announcement, or at least as of right now, of a PC version, which seems a bit sh strange considering the fact that from what i understand the pc version did sell very well i think it like sold like over 900,000 copies so the fact that they're not bringing it to the pc does seem like an odd choice and i also think it kind of is a bit of a missed opportunity um it is possible they could be making it and they haven't announced it yet though but still odd that they're not they haven't announced that for the pc version um, either way, I'm very happy that they're bringing this game over. Um, I have been a fan of the series, though. I like I said, love the art style, story, gameplay as well. And I'm very happy that they're bringing the game to the Nintendo Switch, though. And Sega, if you are watching this, and I, I don't know if they will, but if you are, which I would love if you bring Valkyrie Chronicles Remaster to the Nintendo Switch along with possibly a remake of Valkyrie Chronicles 2 and Valkyrie Chronicles 3, though, as well. That would be great. And, again, I might be a minority on this one. I wouldn't mind if you bring Valkyrie Chronicles Re Valkyrie Re Revolution over here as well. I know not everyone liked that game. I know, again, I'm in the minority on that one, but would love to see that come to the Nintendo Switch as well. So, bottom line is, we're getting Valkyrie Chronicles 4, which is nice. Um, and we are, it's also coming to the Nintendo Switch, which is also great as well. So, thumbs up on that one. Alright, um, we're going to take a bit of a break. And when we come back, I'm going to get to you about a certain thing I found in the latest issue of Game Informer regarding 
uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 that I, I'm actually very happy about, though. I'm very glad that they are doing this, though. So we'll take a bit of a break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video of this week's My Two Cent. And for this one, I want to talk about an interesting thing I found in regarding the upcoming game Xenoblade Chronicles 2 that was found at this this latest issue of Game Informer magazine. This one, has, although this one does folk main focus, is going to be on Monster Hunter World that's coming out. Um, so as you all know, the the last, at least the last Switch game that will be released, at least for this year, unless there's an, a surprise like we saw with Doom and Wolfenstein 2 in a way, is going to be Xenoblade Chronicles 2, um, one of Nintendo's JRPG series that has been around since, you know, 2011 when the original Xenoblade Chronicles came out, with Xenoblade Chronicles X being the next entry released on the Wii U. Would love to see a port of Xenoblade Chronicles X come to Nintendo Switch if that ever happens though. I know not everyone was a big fan of it, but would like to see that happen. So anyway, based on some of the videos and based on the previews, it looks pretty, looks very good and it's something I'm going to be looking forward to playing when it comes out, I believe, December 1st. However, an interesting thing was pointed out in the article of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 that caught my attention that it's sort of, which if true, it's kind of a sigh of relief in this day and age where microtransaction is under the radar, which I will be talking about in the third video when I get to that one. So why don't we get, why don't I read you the article? In an issue of Game Informer magazine, um, it adds an interesting part and I'll read this. It's under a world of exploration though. And this is what the article says, quote, um, exploration has always been a huge part in the Xenoblade series, and that isn't changing. If anything, it's getting even more excited with additional addition of core crystals, which are used to unlock new blades. Some, some, some you, some or some of you collect. Some, some crystals can be collected through through the story, while others can be found by doing quests or taking down enemies. Core crystals come in three different tires. T-I-E-T-I-E-R-S, if I'm saying that correctly. Common, rare, or legendary. Now, here's the part that's caught my attention. This is the part that should interest some people who are thinking about getting Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Nintendo says, and I quote, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has no microtransaction, so you won't be buying these crystals with real money. The game has some way you can increase your chance of getting certain elements by buying boosters with, and I quote, in-game currencies, but they don't come cheap. You can't, you also can't cheat because the game saves as soon as you open up, open a core crystal, not allowing you to reload if you don't get the crystal, if you don't, not, excuse me, not allowing you to reload if you don't get what you want. So that's sort of the interesting thing right there, is apparently that although the, there will be these crystals in the games that use to, I think, get new blades or improve your blades, Nintendo's basically saying that there is not going to be any microtransactions. Now, assuming this is all correct, assuming that it's true, that should be breathe a sigh of relief for a lot of people. As some of you are aware, loot box and microtransactions have been under the microscope, which under, thanks to what EA did. Oh, I will get to that in the third part though. So it is very nice to know that Nintendo will not be putting that, or at least that's what they're saying, not be putting it into their game. Now some will argue and say, well, they may not be putting it, but they could do a system update and somehow put that in, sneak that in or put that in there, which, yeah, that's possible they could do that. But then again, looking at some of the issues regarding ranging from microtransactions to DLCs though, Nintendo, for most of its part, most of it, has done a pretty good job with it and not have not done anything that's created a nickel to dime the death or basically trying to squeeze as much money out of, out of their fans or their consumers. Um, Fire Emblem Heroes that were released on, say, the mobile devices, for example, for the most part, 
It does have these orbs, but for the majority of the times, these orbs can be earned either through the, in the game, or you could earn them like when every time you log in, you get one per day. Two, if you're signed up to my Nintendo, and yes, you could still buy them, but I don't feel like that Fire Emblem Heroes has turned into a pay-to-win situation, at least based on my time with it, though. And as far as DLCs, they've been pretty good with it, though. Um, considering that a lot of their games tend to have a lot of meat in it, a lot, and so on. So, it's sort of like adding more to it, though. Basically, handling DLCs properly, though. I will admit, as far as Fire Emblem Echoes, I'm kind of torn with that one, considering that they're asking you for $40 for a season pass. Compared to, say, Fire Emblem Warriors or Mario Plus Rabbit Kingdom Battles, where they ask for $20, though. So. Again, I know some people have issues with season passes and so on, but as far as they've been handling it, that they've done a pretty good job with it, though. And as far as any use of microtransactions, they've pretty much kept it within the mobile phones of it, and it hasn't felt, like I said, it hasn't felt like a nickel and dime to death or a pay to win kind of a situation. So I'm leaning towards the fact that I do believe that on the fact that there won't be any microtransactions in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. We'll have to wait and see until the final product comes out, but I'm more leaning towards that, given Nintendo's history of, of what they have done with their games, including the amount of quality and content in it. So, assuming this is all true, which, I, which I'm leaning towards it is though, I think that is great. I think it's nice to know that for all the faults Nintendo has, and there are some criticisms Nintendo does deserve, it's nice to know that they're not pulling what EA is pulling right now, though. So it's very, at least very encouraging on that. And that makes it even more, more reason for me to pick up Xenoblade Chronicles 2 more than I would say with Star Wars Battlefront 2, though. So overall, Good that there's no microtransaction in the game. Good that it's basically in-game currencies only, though. So I'm definitely happy about that. Okay, uh, we're going to take a bit of a break. And when we come back, we're going to get to our third and final story. And this one, as I mentioned, this one it has to do with EA. And how, every, how it all hit the fan very quickly regarding loot boxes, though. So we'll take a little bit of a break. And we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with the third and final part of our video. Don't worry about my phone. That's just my phone. It's getting like some response or something like that. Anyway, to the third and final part of this video, and this one has to do with Star Wars Battlefront 2. And oh boy, can this get, you know the old saying, could this possibly get any worse? Well, apparently it did, if you are yay for that matter. So, as we all know, last week there were reports saying that came out that EA pulled the microtransactions, at least for now, in response to the angry backlash, though many suspect that that would have to do with basically Disney not being happy with it. Well, after that, apparently this week got the attention of government officials about this regarding this issue. Um, and several articles, uh, I have a link in the description, but this one comes off of basically from GameStop and apparently what happened is that on November 22nd US Senator Chris Lee rep representing Hawaii spoke about the predatorial practice from EA saying and this is some of his quotes this game is a Star Wars theme online casino designed to lure kids into into spending money it's a trap no pun intended though it, on that one and then we've heard reports of not only the Belgium government getting involved, but now recently it started to come out that the French government and even the Australian government is getting involved, investigating whether or not the purpose of loot boxes are basically in form of gambling. Although reports from the Entertainment Software Association, again, I believe I have a link in the description of this, of this video, still refuse still views loot boxes not as a form of gambling though. The fact that this unfolded very quickly is just beyond amazing though. And what makes it even more amazing is that it took a Star Wars game, not Middle Earth, 
of Shadow of Wars, not any other games out there that that does it, like, say, Clash of Clans or anything else. A Star Wars game. And of all the things it happened to, it happened to EA. A company that is hated by a lot of people for a lot of their practices. And this basically has just opened this whole Pandora box that they started wide open. Now, there are some people who are kind of in defense of this, though. We've heard from the whole CNBC argument, but an article from the Washington Examiner, and I believe I have a link in the description, still points about the idea of government regulation, government regulating um, video games, for example. And to some degree, I can somewhat understand, though, okay? We've seen what happened in terms of the government stepping in to try to regulate video games and all that stuff. Remember back in the 90s? Remember the whole violent video game issue that popped out? We saw that after the Columbine shooting where um, we've, where the government tried to talk about, bring up the issue of violent video games, not to mention lawsuits were filed, though. There's, you know, the infamous, you know, former Connecticut Senator Joe Lieberman bringing this up to the famous anti-video game lawyer Jack Thompson. Remember him as well. So there's the issue of that coming into play on there, that part. On the other side of the coin, there are people who are arguing about this becoming an anti-consumer practice, though. And I do agree we hear the argument of, oh, it's just cosmetics, though. And the thing is, you can make that argument all you want to. You could say cosmetics, but that's not going to stop a developer if they put microtransactions like that to create it where in order to progress, it becomes a pay to win situation. Then, yeah, I could see why people would pretty much be pissed off about that. And the fact that you have them now exploring and looking into this really indicates, though, that it really shows that EA screwed this one up big time. Now, granted, I do agree with the argument that microtransactions probably are not going to be going away. But I do expect that a lot of developers now are going to be under the radar big time over this, though, because the last thing they do want to do is create the situation that that got EA in trouble and all over this. So it, it doesn't it appears as though we're not seeing microtransactions going away. But the fact that the government is now stepping could step in and could are basically looking into this clearly indicates how far this has really gone though not to mention from what i understand ea later dropped or at least changed their microtransaction in their latest need for speed game though in which that game was accused of being a pay to win kind of a situation because of this fallout though i mean you, EA, you really wanted to add more to this, though? You already upset people with Mass Effect Andromeda. You closed Visceral Studios that did not hit, not, that really upset a lot of people. And now you just added more and more to this. And I know some people will defend EA and say, uh, are a bit upset of gamers being, uh, saying that they're overreacting. And that may be true. Some gamers, sometimes, depending on the issue, do you overreact on certain situations? Not to mention, we've seen cases where some have made death threats before. However, when you have a company that has won worst company in America for two years in a row, a company that lied, a company that basically released SimCity that was unplayable despite the claim that it needed a DRM and then try to blame consumers for it, um, a company that said that they needed to sell 5 million copies of Dead Space in order to franchise to succeed and then basically turned Dead Space 3 into microtransactions and the controversy with Mass Effect, with Mass Effect 3 and Audromina and a studio that's widely known to close other studios when and when their games don't go as well because they stepped in and put in policy stuff that people do not agree with though you can see why they're not beloved by a lot of people and it's sort of a bit of it's sort of interesting the fact that they are now receiving a lot of the blows out of this though personally um i understand that i understand there needs to be a change in the way this is being done i mean i would like to see microtransactions go away from 60 dollars games but if that's not going to happen then there needs to be a way to change it from from turning into a pay-to-win kind of situation. And I'm glad the pressure is being pushed onto them. 
I am a little iffy about the government stepping in or doing something about it because I'm a little worried about how far this can go though, okay? It's too early to tell, but we'll have to wait and see though. And I'm glad that it's raising awareness though, but we'll, I'm, it, it can, be, can be a little iffy with the government stepping in though. As for the Star Wars license, I'm gonna say this though. If I were Disney, I seriously, seriously would reevaluate signing a deal with EA to give them to create Star Wars video games because given the amount of backlash and how this turns into, I really think they should re-examine this though. I really think they should really look at other developers other than EA. I mean, I say they should take the license away. If that doesn't happen, then at least look at other developers to bring the Star Wars games to life. I mean, look at, think about maybe teaming up with, say, Bethesda or Square Enix to create like an RPG Star Wars game for them. You know, from the creators of, say, Final Fantasy XV or the Kingdom Hearts game, or the creators of, say, Skyrim and Fallout. Have them help create a Star Wars game. Or look at teaming up with Sega and look at maybe the people who created Skies of Arcadia. Uh, Fantasy Stars or the Valkyrie Chronicles. Have them create a Star Wars game. Um, look at basically teaming up with Teletales um, and have sort of a Star Wars point and click adventure game. Um, look at maybe Platinum. They're known for over the top action titles. Why not team up with them to create a Star Wars game though? I mean from the same people who created the Nier Ultimato game that came out this year to the Bayonetta series or consider maybe them redoing and remaking um the force unleashed i thought that was a good game i thought that had potential i think there were some areas they could have addressed though um consider maybe or consider teaming up with sony santa monica studio to create have the developers who created the god of war series to cr create a specific star wars game though i mean it would be for the ps4 though but still you could team up with them or Say, team up with Nintendo or Bandai Namco and the folks who do the Ace Combat series and maybe bring back the Rogue Squadron series as beloved by people. Maybe create, remake all three of the Rogue Squadron games or maybe even bring or even create a whole new Rogue Squadron game though. Or ha team up with the developers who did Breath of the Wild or the Zelda series or the folks who are working on the Xenoblade Chronicle series to create like a... RPG Zelda game, like I mentioned with Square Enix and Bethesda, to um, an adventure title, though. I mean, so, with, you know, the folks who made the Breath of the Wild and known to make the Zelda series. So, and, and I apologize if I'm not naming, haven't named any other developers. This is just the ones that pop out in my head. But the point is, for Disney, though, is that there are so much potential this license can have, and there are other developers that can do a really good job with it, though. I think EA really has screwed this one up and it's really had put a bad image not only in this game but it could also put a bad image in the Star Wars license in general. And if for some reason the movie doesn't perform as well, I think it will, but if it performs not as well as say The Force Unleashed did, you could be sure that a lot of people will point to Star Wars Battlefront to and EA for causing this though. Um, so the bottom line on that one is that I really think Disney should re-examine the Star Wars license. As for this whole episode, you know what? It's going to be interesting to see how further this train wreck can go. How far this whole train wreck can really go though. But you know, it's a little bit of interesting karma. I think it's amazing that EA got in hot waters over this though. And I'm pretty sure, and hopefully this will be a lesson to other developers of saying that if you push your luck with microtransaction and DRM, consumers will um, bite back. We will, and it, it can be, it can be, it, it can be bad though. So very interesting how this has played out though, and we'll be very interested to see how this plays out down the road and in the future. And it'll be very interesting to see how developers respond going forward should they ever decide to put microtransactions in their games, whether it's in consoles, PCs, or mobile games in general. <clears throat> okay, um, this concludes this video for this My Two Cent for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? 
What are your thoughts about the announcement of Valkyrie Chronicles 4, though? Are you looking forward to that game to coming out? Um, or did Valkyrie Revolution disappoint you in any way? Um, are you glad it's coming to the Nintendo Switch like I am as well? Did you Do you really care in any way? And what about this whole issue with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in the latest issue of Game Informers about the crystals? Are you glad Nintendo's not adding microtransactions on it? Uh, did you do you did you really care though? Um, do you think they will stay true to their words on it? Like like I do, like how I believe how I'm leaning towards that they are though. And what are your thoughts about the whole situation with Star Wars Battlefront True Battlefront 2 and the whole train wreck that seems to have come out on this? Do you think it's going do you think this issue do you think it's gonna get better? Do you think it's gonna get worse? Do you think EA deserves the amount of backlash it's getting though? Do you think Disney should reevaluate their license to EA over the Star Wars video games? Um, do you have a difference? Of, do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree with what I said? Do you have a difference of opinion though? As always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Um, I hope you, hit, hope you hit that like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like, though. It could be through PayPal Me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. Um, and I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, I wish you all a good day, and I also wish you all a happy and safe Thanksgiving, and also a happy safe Thanksgiving weekend as well.